Hello everyone and welcome to Recovering the BFR. The BFR is the Big Falcon rocket that SpaceX may eventually use to launch the Mars Colonial Transporter. Here you see the Mars Colonial Transporter on top and then the Big Falcon rocket underneath and the launch pad blowing up because this is a very big rocket, 5,000 tons on the launch pad there and we are using 30 Raptor engines, which will be the next-gen SpaceX engines. I did this during the live stream on the past Sunday, and the challenge is to recover the big Falcon rocket that you see there. So it's going to launch the Mars Colonial Transporter to a high altitude. The Mars Colonial Transporter will then make its own orbit, and then we have to bring back the booster. Now you'll notice it's a very fat booster, and that's partly because it's got 30 engines at the bottom, and also partly because it's using a high-density fuel methane and liquid oxygen so that's why it's that shape there is no real way to make it any thinner of course you could have three boosters uh, they'd still be somewhat fat because of the density of the fuel but uh, it seems like uh, Elon Musk has said that he is leaning towards a single really large booster like this and there we go it has boosted the MCT to a decent altitude and we are launching out Cape Canaveral here. Now it has to retro burn a bit in order to separate itself, so I'm organizing that there. And I've used Super Dracos to retro burn because apparently Elon Musk does not like solid rocket boosters on the separation even, so no separatrons. And I think Super Dracos would be fine. And here we go, this is a single Raptor vacuum engine. I'm using the specs that are available right now and it seems like the engines are about 2300 kilonewtons and so that's what I've got and uh, the ISPs have all been stated at this point here is doing a roll this particular Mars Colonial Transporter can transport 55 Kerbals altogether and it can carry all the necessary supplies for a trip to Mars it when it's fully fueled right now it's not fully fueled you can see there's plenty of methane and oxygen capacity empty and that's because it gets fueled in orbit by another rocket and then it goes on to Mars so, and with its full fuel load, it can make the trip to Mars and get into orbit around Mars without any problems. It's got a pretty substantial delta V margin, and the reason why I chose the Mark IV parts is because of the flat bottom that would allow for error braking. Uh, I should note that I made realism overhaul configurations for the Mark IV parts, so these have been modified, and they're sized up by 1.7 times and given much more mass. Uh, you can see that the massive vehicle is 91 tons, that's without most of its fuel, and also lacking some of the supplies it actually needs. Those will be delivered up later on. I actually needed to increase the size of the tanks for the food, water, and oxygen. Anyway, I switched vessels, but I got to the fairings instead of the BFR, and I couldn't uh, change vessels in the atmosphere, so I had to launch again. And so here we go from Cape Canaveral for the second time. And separation. Uh, this time I didn't uh, endeavor to prove that the MCT could make orbit. We had already figured that out. So now it was just a matter of whether this could boost back. So here we go. You can see the engine arrangement there. And I'm lighting the 10 engine ring. There are 30 engines. There's a 14 engine ring, a 10 engine ring, and then a 6 engine ring. And they're all action groups. Each of the engines can ignite 5 times maximum. And so you can figure it out. So that's why I'm using that ring instead of the six engine ring because I'll reserve the six engine ring for the actual touchdown. So here we go, uh, 70 kilometers. I should mention that I upped the heat tolerance, the max skin temp on the tank a bit. It turned out to get a Falcon 9 to survive uh, during a return, I needed to get the skin temp to about 2000 degrees Celsius. That's not completely unusual. and it wasn't the temperature that caused the problem here, uh, as we will soon check. It's a completely different factor. I'll bring up the dialog. There we go. Aerodynamic stresses was what ripped that apart. So we were coming down at too high g-forces, and so far did not like that, and so the vehicle got destroyed. Now to solve this problem, also it didn't seem like I had enough fuel to get back to Cape Canaveral. So to solve both problems, I decided that the best thing to do would be to launch from Brownsville and then try to land in Cape Canaveral. So we're launching from Texas and landing in Florida, crossing the Gulf of Mexico. And uh, this will 
reduce the amount of delta V I need, which means that I would have more delta V to slow down and reduce the g-forces. So here we go out of Brownsville, Texas, which is a spaceport that that SpaceX is planning to use. And you can see there, I'm trying to figure out what heading to use. This time I started out at 90 and that's obviously wrong. We're headed for Miami. I'll refine that in the future in other launches. But here we go, we've separated. The MCT is on its way. This time drone controlled, no Kerbals on board. And now this has to do its very long flip around. It's, uh, RCS thrusters are not that powerful. I made them very realistic. And uh, they are, they're still stronger than the nitrogen ones the Falcon 9 has though. So there's that. But then again, this is 750 tons right now. And you can see we've got 2,800 meters per second left in there. But we are headed towards Miami. More like Lake Okeechobee. Okay, and here I am retro burning to bring that in. You can see landing guidance from MechJep indicating where I'm going to end up or about where I'm going to end up. I didn't have the far plug in for MechJep in this one, so it wasn't quite accurate. Air brakes out. And you can see 1,600 meters per second left, so I burned about 1,200 on that retro. And you can see where we're aimed at. I did another burn, but remember, only five ignitions. But I was using the 10-engine set, so we still have some ignitions on this 6-engine set. But here we go through the critical area between 20 and 30 kilometers, and stuff blows up. Not as bad, though. We lost the 6-engine ring and then the 10-engine ring. This was actually probably the thrust plate multi-adapters, maybe, getting lost. But we still have the 14 engine ring. Yeah, it looks like the thrust plate multi-adapter had issues. Or, well, maybe just aerodynamic stress again. Well, thrust plate collided into Raptor SL anyway. Lots of aerodynamic stresses. Anyway, so here we go on the shore of Lake Okeechobee. And with 1,000 meters per second left. The reason the total delta V is less than the stage delta V is because of the retro engines at the top. I should mention that not only do we have the limited ignitions to deal with, but these engines take some time to get to max thrust. They don't immediately uh, get up to the thrust that I've set the throttles at. Also, they don't throttle fully. Uh, their minimum throttle is 27%. Uh, this matches the physical model that they're based on, which is the RD191. I just added the configuration of the Raptor engine to that model because they're going to be about the same size. Now, you'll be wondering why I don't have the landing legs down, and that's because we have no connection here. Uh, you can see no connection up there, so I couldn't lower the landing legs. Couldn't uh, send the command. And so, this is gonna die. And you gotta see some of the effect of not being able to spool up the engines quickly. There we go. Of course, we would have connection if we were landing close to Cape Canaveral, but right now we are not in line of sight of anything and there happens to be no satellite directly overhead. If we do land at Cape Canaveral, it's not going to be any problem like this uh, without any connection to lower the landing legs, but yeah, that's no good. This time, it looks like the approach is much better as far as our heading to Cape Canaveral. Uh, the correct heading is about 75 degrees out from Brownsville. If you start out with a heading of 75 degrees, you'll hit Cape Canaveral. So, if anybody else wants to try launching from Brownsville and landing at Cape Canaveral. That's the way to do it. And uh, it will take some minor adjustments though. So once again, in in flight and separated from the Mars Colonial Transporter and slowly making the turn to retrograde. We're passing by Louisiana and the target difference looks to be about 15 kilometers. So we're about 15 kilometers off. Now, that, that doesn't bode well for actually hitting it because we're going to retro burn and change that. So we're probably going to be quite a bit off, but we'll see. Here I am in the atmosphere. Not yet using the engine, still 3,000 meters per second. And now I start using the engines at below 70 kilometers. Mainly because I knew that any use of the engines would deviate us a lot from Cape Canaveral. 
you can see actually the cape is over there. We don't have the KSC there because we had it at uh, Brownsville. I'd have to go to the tracking station and change the location of the KSC. But I don't know how well that would work uh, and whether it would crash the game because any scene change adds a lot of possibility of that. Here we are, still burning and uh, coming in quite hot now. I really should have started the retro burn a lot earlier and you can see the engines are overheating. And I try and shut the engines off to reduce the overheating, but that doesn't work. So we lose one, we lose another, and we start losing more. Seems like the ones in the center go first. The ones in the outer ring seem relatively safer. And so that's the situation right there. We lost all of them in the center, and then... Uh, We've got one missing from the second ring, and so I just shut down one engine, and I ultimately shut down two more, so that we only have six active on touchdown. And yes, obviously not Cape Canaveral. Um, obviously we are a little bit too far inland, and in a, over a populated area. Not good, but we'll try this anyway. This practice, we're 30 kilometers away from the target. And so I'm seeing whether six engines is the right number. And... Well... It looks like I started the burn a little bit too late. On the other hand, we discovered that after I tweak scaled the landing struts 400% uh, 400 so they're four times their normal size, they seem to have a weird physics to them. They... they they are bouncy. They're very bouncy. But the net effect of bounciness is not really to help with survival here. So, yeah. I'll fix the bounciness some other time, I think. I mean, maybe I can fix the bounciness, but... Uh, oh, that's an interesting thing. It immediately jumped us to this already in flight. Um, I don't know how we got there. Ah, uh, KSB physics. Anyway, we will proceed with another attempt. You can see it lined up right there. And here, starting to turn around. So, again, the solution after the previous attempt is to start retro-burning sooner. And I figure right when I hit the atmosphere, I should start retro-burning, was what I decided on. Good approach. You can see the cape there already. Air brakes out, and we've got the engines ready. There we go. Ignition. You can see I only have 700 meters per second left of delta V, so I used a lot of delta V to slow down, and that seemed to be the th ticket to reducing the g-forces in the heating. Well, of course, that doesn't leave me much to work with on actually landing the thing, so we'll see how that works. You can see pretty high g-forces past 5 g's, but not nearly as high as before. Unfortunately, it looks like if I don't use any fuel to slow down further, we're going to end up in the water. I decided I wanted to keep at least 500 meters per second for actually setting down, so I used 180 meters per second to try and hit the shore, but that failed. We ended up over water, lowered landing legs, and I, I kept forgetting to just add the landing legs to the gear action group. So here we go, trying to stop ourselves okay use an ignition there and that's a bit too late shucks I don't have a splash sound effect I have to add this uh, sound effects afterwards because I was playing music during this so here we go retro burning Okay, using up about the same amount of fuel. You can see the target difference in the MechJet landing guidance. And it claims 3 kilometers, 2 kilometers. Says we're going to be off by 2 kilometers, but the, the FAR plugin for MechJeb is not in there, so it's not quite accurate. 
We've reserved 557 meters per second for actual touchdown. You can see it varies when the engine's gimbal, that's why that changes. Okay, here we go, the touchdown burn. Okay, well we used an ignition there. Gotta keep track of these. Here we go again. Seems like there's too much power out of the six engines here. It's tending to start, I mean, it wants to start us going back up, and so I can't leave them lit, and now I'm out of ignitions. And, well, the landing gears saved us on the initial impact, but obviously we are not saved. Ultimately, we saw what happens there, so let's try again. Yep. Uh, that got destroyed and here we go 30 kilometers now it says a target difference of 10 kilometers because I found out that there was that discrepancy and I figured I needed to change the balance but unfortunately we didn't slow down as much as before you know stage Delta V is a thousand one hundred eighty so we should have slowed down by about 500 meters per second more to avoid the g-forces and aerodynamic stresses so we lost two engines. Uh, one of them decided to hang out for a while, but it didn't get any fuel flow to it. So now we have four engines that are active for a touchdown. So we'll see how that works. Maybe a fortuitous circumstance, considering six engines seem to be too much. Landing gear down. Having trouble clicking on that. Okay. So that's how it is with that engine sort of caught there. And here we go with the landing bird. Best thing would be able to keep the engines running. If we start going up though, at the minimum throttle, then we can't keep the engines running. But it looks good. It looks like when we go to low throttle, our vertical speed decreases. And it seems rather controllable. So, for your future adventures with Big Falcon rockets, with 30 Raptor engines at the bottom, four engines for touchdown, please. Okay, very careful. We had an overabundance of Delta V, right? We had 1,100 meters per second left. But it doesn't look like I'm using more than the 500 I estimated I would need. Well, pretty darn close though. Okay, and touchdown. Very soft landing, very good. Uh, how far away are we from the KSC? 5 kilometers it says, 5 kilometer difference. Not bad for, uh, oh wait. Um, <laughs> well, well. We, we couldn't possibly get through this without some weird glitchiness, could we? So yeah, much information learned, and uh, I did make some other tests after this, but I think this was the most successful one. And uh, I will remember to try and separate four engines on that core so I can ship down two and just use four for touchdown if I decide to go with this configuration. There are other possible configurations for the... Mars Colonial Transporter and the Big Falcon Rocket. SpaceX hasn't fully released its plans, just made some hints and suggestions. So we will see what they come up with, I believe, in September of this year. And they will reveal the details, perhaps. Until then, we can speculate all we want and have this, this fun. I was playing music, so it was sort of dancing to it or celebrating or something. But then it decided to go to, go to the destruction route. Except for the two engines that we lost in flight, though, the engine cluster is still intact over there. And so we'll zoom in on that, and I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.